guys are dead. They look like they're soulless. They look like there's, there's no one in. There's something missing. And then there's those of us that are totally awake, and this is so transparent. And you just puzzle yourself with, how can you not see? I can see so clearly. 400-year-old agenda here, folks. But there's so much information out there that just wasn't out 20 years ago. None of what you're going to partake in sounds good, does it? Lee, good to see you, brother. Good to see you too, mate. How are you? <laughs> yes. I'm um, firing. A bit run New down, as I, as I said to you earlier, but that's uh, just um, sometimes nature's telling you to take it a bit easier, isn't she? Yeah, you got to listen. Yeah. But really, really good to chat to you again. And this is one of my favourite subjects, which it, this is a difficult one generally referred to as spirituality but what i'm finding is that really throws people they think you're stuck you're talking about like religion or something or, or being bought like new new age and or sitting around the fire singing fucking come by are doing nothing yeah yeah and yeah no, there's a lot of bollocks and babble the new age stuff there's a lot of babble out there i mean i think spirituality really for me is just having a realization of what you are how you're much more than this mind and body for one thing and also the awakening of you know we've been totally misled for so long you know it's just having a, a, an, a, an awakening in your intelligence level in your consciousness you just start to almost remember stuff that you always knew rather than learn something new it's quite difficult to explain really but those who are going through it understand it it's just incredible, mate. I'm I'm so glad that I've got to this point in my life. Are you? Are you? I am. I, I'm really surprised it took you so long. I mean, I've always known from a perspective of the, the establishment that we've been fucked over forever. But in terms of a spiritual awakening, I mean, it didn't come upon me until literally two years ago. So I had 52 years on this mortal coil, you know, just thinking that, you know, when you're dead, you're in the dirt. That's your lot. You know, and I have honestly have different beliefs now as to, uh, you know, the miracle of what we are, mm -hmm. if you like. And uh, more and more people are, are coming to the same loose conclusion. I mean, I, they're saying that this period of time is the great awakening. They're saying that there's a, an ascension in consciousness to every organic living thing on the planet it has begun. So I think more and more people are going to relate to, uh, you know, their own awakening of a sort. There's varying degrees to it, of course. But, yeah, it's certainly a real tangible thing that you can feel, certainly for me anyway. Yeah, Lee, do, I, do you think, right, here's the thing, right, if you and I tried to have this conversation with each other 20 years ago, I'm talking uh, <coughs> cough, cough, after certain events happened in America, you'd have said, Chris, you are effing mad, mate, and I'd have gone, and if you told me, I'd have gone, what, what's this guy? I'd have been about, the biggest right? sceptic of all. Yeah. yeah, the biggest sceptic of all. I haven't suddenly, you know, just <laughs> woke up and you know, or, or took some kind of drug or pill. I guess you could metaphorically say I've took the red pill. Yeah. But I haven't just suddenly, you know, gone mad and had a different type of thinking. I've, I, this has been a gradual thing and it just comes from a knowing. When all of this began, I started to smell a rat and I started to explore a lot more, like I said last time, and I could see. And honestly, now that's just so, everything is so transparent to me. You know, I can, I can see it under a different lens, different focus. So what, like you say, two years ago, no, I wouldn't have believed to fucking any of this. Absolutely not. I would have said, you know, you lay off the blue ones, what you're doing. But, but, more and more people. I mean, many of things. If you'd have said to people two years ago, you know, you'd be standing on little dots in a shop that two metres apart and that's not going to stop and that carry on. And then you'll have to continue getting this and getting this and getting this. And if you want to go and see the new Matrix movie, you're going to have to have a vaccination passport, which is bollocks, really, because if you have a vaccination passport just to get in the cinema, you've missed the point of the previous three films. You know, just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fucking... <laughs> 
I, I wouldn't have believed any of what's going on. So, but now, I mean, my my mind is is well and truly open. Yeah. yeah. And what I was saying is, um, is now this conversation. If you'd had it twenty years ago with someone, they they just call you Tim Foil Hat and all this stuff. And basically, you was on your own. I mean. I had a, Can you imagine the number of people that were awake that long ago? I mean, I know many. You know, I know many that have been like, they're awake 10 years ago. You have the conversation and you realise you're on the same page. And you go, oh, you're awake there. No, I've been awake for years, 10 years. I'm thinking to myself, what a fucking lonely place that must have been. Because, you know, back then, you, who would you talk to? Well, <laughs> the, the, Lee, this is what I'm getting at. This, this was me, mate, right? This, this is going out with your mates for a beer. And they all turn and laugh at you because you're the, um, you know, you're you're the conspiracy theorist, and and you know in your mind you're just smarter than all this lot, right? Uh, it's just you're just more you're better educated, and they you know they watch the football. With well, the, term, the term conspiracy theorist was devised by the CIA to gaslight you, to make you look like a fucking idiot. Isn't it? I mean, that's that's yeah. that's everybody knows that, but I think it's becoming an old hat term now because more and more things are being conspiracy fact than conspiracy theory. I mean, there's more and more coming to light that is creating that just that doubt, that light bulb moment where there could be plausibility. But I really do think that, um, you know, many are just completely conditioned right now to be totally unaccepted of anything it's almost like they're cocooned to a certain level of intelligence that there's there's no room to go any further so nothing else could be contemplated and they, they just give you this kind of dead fluoride stare and you know you're not going to get anywhere so really i don't bother but uh yeah i mean it's, it's it's so strange i mean i don't know if you've noticed but like a lot of people that you see around and about particularly that are all you know muzzled up their eyes are dead. They look like they're soulless. They look like there's there's no one in. There's something missing. I mean, I had a little few words the other day. Most of the time, I just, you know, I go with it. I try to talk to people if they listen. If not, I don't push anything on anyone. But I saw this woman, and she's crossing the street with these two children, and they're really young, they're about five or six, and they've both got a mask on. One of them's got a mask on so tight, his little chubby cheeks are coming over it. And he's sucking it in as he's breathing and she's trying to make it on and she's got one on as well. And I just looked at them and I just went, like, take the mask off the kids and let them breathe some oxygen for fuck's sake. And she just gave me this cold stare and then almost her eyes looked like she glitched and then looked the other way and then walked off and waddled off. And I went, you think you're helping these children? You're not. They're breathing in their own carbon dioxide. You're killing them. What's the matter with you? Do your research, for God's sake. And it just didn't compute. She's just like, no, can't not listen, can't hear it. And then just walked off and waddled off with these kids. And it's so heart rendering, particularly as a father. I mean, they're not my children. It's not my place to take this woman and shake her and say, look, I know you're well-meaning, but you're doing the wrong thing. But I just think it's so sad. But what got me was I tried to communicate with her and it was just like, there's no one in. As soon as you talk about something that doesn't compute, just this wall goes up. You're, you're no way you're getting through. You could sit them in a chair, pin the fucking eyes open and bombard them with images, clockwork orange style for 24 hours. And she still wouldn't get it. I'm like, what is that about? I, I just don't get it. That is brainwashing on another level to me. Yeah. And, and I just think it's so sad because, you know, these the children, that's, that, <laughs> that's who we got to protect here. Yeah, if you try... Oh, we got that feedback thing again. I'll just keep speaking. Um, yeah, trying to wake other people up, I think, is rather futile unless the timing is right for them. Like, obviously, it was for us at some point in our well, life. And I think it's inevitable that it's going to come, but I don't think that... It, I think it has to get a lot worse before it gets better. And before, for all, in order for this current world, the way it's been for so long, to end, um, it has to end. And I think that will be abrupt. I think that will be, there'll be carnage involved. But this has to die in order for a new world to be born. And I don't mean a new fucking world order. I mean a new age where we are in realisation of what we are and, you know, we're not being you know, blood-sucked and parasited off by these 
well, whatever it is that's doing this. Mm. You know, I mean, I, just, I, just, I think the awakening will come for everyone. Some may be too late. I think many will not be able to handle it. I honestly think the damn lies will just fall out. And people, when they have the realisation that everything they've ever plausibly known in their life is bullshit, needs to be rethought, is not totally correct. I don't think people are going to handle that. So I think those of us that are, are, you know, more awake to what's going on, I don't think the job is to wake others up. I think that time's passed. If that's going to happen, then it's going to happen, you know, at their, for their own, at their own pace, at their own time. I think the main thing that people who are awake, rather than go, oh, I told you so, can only be here to be comforting, to guide and to be helpful. You know? but I have this puzzlement as to why are there so many people in the majority that are fucking fast asleep or worse than that, willfully ignorant. They know something's wrong, but don't want to know, in which case they're, they're a part of it. And then there's those of us that are totally awake and this is so transparent. And you just puzzle yourself in, how can you not see? I can see so clearly. Why is there a minority of us that are in that camp? And there is. And there, there's, there's more and more. But it just makes me wonder, why? What's the purpose of that? Are we here? We must be here to do something with it. There must be a reason for it. I don't know. But yeah. It boggles your head. <laughs> it really boggles your head. But, I, I, you know, I listen to a lot of good people. You've got to sort the wheat from the chaff because there's a lot of people out there that are, you know, they're purposely to misdirect and misinform and there's a lot of controlled opposition and everything else and, and people out there. There's just one point I want to make quick from the last time that I was here. I talked before about um, non-physical personal protection and I'm, I talked about a few things that relate to that. But unknowingly, I thought I'd mentioned somebody, I really wanted to mention somebody that um, had pushed me in that direction and that I'd like to plug. And that's Lee Hasdall, I don't know if you're familiar with him. But Lee Hasdall of Inner Guardians. I mean, the guy's probably switched on, like, uh, and awoken, I would say. But he has some great information um, for um, non-physical personal protection in, in terms of you know, looking after your immune system and uh, also... Uh, psychic kind of self-protection because I feel that we are in a war here and, and it's not it's, it's, it's like a non-physical spiritual war and it's it's on a number of levels and I do believe that we are being got at on a number of levels through um, through you know through food through uh, what's in the air through what's in the water it's almost like it's a, a psychological, spiritual, and a chemical war of a sort. Mm. We need to look after ourselves. We need to clean this vessel. We need to detoxify because uh, we need to make sure that we're healthy and eat good nutrition. You know, God code is in good food. Anything synthetic is is fucking us up and has been. And I think a big part of the awakening will be the realization to those things too. But one of the people that put me more on that path was um, Lee Hasdall. The ex, he's an ex MMA fighter. He was a professional bodyguard in Russia. He's well known, but he is um, has a great podcast called Inner Guardians, or a great channel called Inner Guardians. I just want to give him a plug because I meant to do that last time, and um, for some reason I slipped my mind, so I didn't. So I just want to make that right. Yeah, no, it's nice. Big, big hello to Lee out there. Yeah. Um, I don't know why, but for friends at home, I apologise. It sounds like there's a bear growling in the background every time I speak. It's fine when I've spoken for a while. Um, <coughs> uh, not not sure how we can get around. I'm not it. hearing it here though. No, it's it's probably yeah. something something messing with it. Have you ever noticed when you know you're watching something get to a juicy bit, or someone's about to drop a truth bomb, and then you'll get this glitch? Oh. It, it, what, it, what the fuck is that about? In the truth movement, it happens all the time now. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's, yeah, it's like it, being constantly monitored. Yeah, I was chatting with a guy on Instagram. Yeah, it was just yesterday. As soon as we got to this bit, his it just started cut. His Instagram just started cut. The signal started cutting out. You know, I've noticed it a lot. Yeah, but um, yeah. What see where I'm trying to get to with the help of my good friend, John St. Julian, a brilliant, brilliant YouTube channel. And, and anyone who's into this stuff, 
which everyone should be because it's what everyone's spending their whole life looking for. But John talks about samadhi. Yeah. And samadhi is the state of being that you reach when you completely learn to disassociate with this carriage here that people call Chris. Yeah. In reality, it's just carbon molecules. And mm. to not think as Chris, to not identify as Chris, but to be, I, I don't know how you explain it, Lee. Oh, I've got some you, points on that. To, to, to talk about, I wanted to talk with you about what actually prompted this podcast for, in the first place, which was the clip that we talked about. So I want to talk about that first. And that would lead me right into that exactly. So I think another term for it is Satori, which is enlightenment. And I think that's when you have the realization that you are more of a full spectrum type of being. So this meat suit is the vehicle to have our experience of consciousness within this realm at this time. So this mind and this body is not all that we are. So I have a good friend that I, um, which last night we had, we have a regular uh, Zoom call. There's about five of us. It's like a soul school. We call it soul dojo, if you like. It's like a place where you can talk freely and comfortably and openly about what your thoughts are on all things including, you know, spirituality, what we're here for, you know, what, what, what we're about. What do these terms mean when people talk about esoteric? What does that mean? What does it mean, unconditional love? Looking at things and scrutinizing them with a critical mind. Try to sort the wheat from the chaff from the New Age Babylon bullshit, which is, a, you know, just a, a wolf in sheep's clothing that basically telling you just to go with the flow and do nothing. And we talk about this a lot. And the conclusion is, is that within we have an original self, the original self being your, your soul, your heart, your spirit, the energy or the consciousness that is giving life to this form via the five senses. And then you have your I self or your I mind, which is what we all believe that we are. And then you have the external world. So if you think about heart, soul, spirit as the true original self, as what we are, as the consciousness that has been in many other forms in reincarnation before and will again, then that entity, that energy, that consciousness, to me, is the same life force that's in any other human being. That's in any other plant or animal or, or insect or any organic living thing on the planet, you know, the sky, the sea, the rocks, whatever else, is a, f- a life form having an experience via the consciousness of its life. And that same energy is within all of us. And that, I believe, is what is source God creator. So your original self would be your, your, your heart, your spirit, your soul. Right. Mm-hmm. And then you have your mind, your I mind. Now, you can't or whatever powers that be have controlled the masses for so long via indoctrination, via mind control, by whatever else you want to consider. That hasn't been done by controlling heart. You can't control heart. Heart can only as a place of truth. But what we have been is disconnected from heart. We've been disconnected from that part of us that knows we're a part of everything else. And there's been so much divide. And what's been controlled or taken control of, in my opinion, is is the mind. The mind has been controlled and it's disconnected us from heart. So even if you look in new age spirituality, they say you've got to connect your head to your heart. No, your, your head's been fucked with. You've been, we've been indoctrinated. We've been controlled. I mean, governmental means govern to control mind, mental, you know, television, tell lies to your vision. We've been completely fucking brainwashed through a number of things. And the mind has been hijacked. If the mind tells the heart what to do, there's never going to be any difference. It's the other way around. You need to find within yourself that you're, Original self is your spirit, your heart, your soul. And that's a good place. And use from that place to 
tell your mind what to do with the external world. And then we would start to uh, create a different situation on this planet, I believe. But what I wanted to talk to you about was the, the, the podcast thing. Is that all right if we talk about that? Absolutely. Okay, so what prompted this, this uh, podcast for us was a clip that I sent to you um, by a guy called Mark Passio, who I definitely recommend that people look at. He's got a great podcast called uh, What on Earth is Going On? What, what on Earth is Happening? And he's got loads of stuff on YouTube. But the one that he put up on YouTube in particular was a clip about what the uh, dark occultists, so-called global elite establishment, call them what you want, but you actually think about us. And more specifically, what they actually think of in terms of the order following police and military. And the reason that I sent it to you, because I thought you might find it interesting, is because, you know, you're an ex-Marine. And the video I sent you, I would sincerely recommend that you put a link for, openly shows how these, this, this so-called establishment mock their order-following uh, subjects with this dark occult symbolism. And so, first of all, the, the term occult simply means hidden knowledge. That's what it means. I mean, if you Google certain words, apocalypse, in, in Google, it's the end of the world. That's not what apocalypse means. If you Google it on another channel, such as DuckDuckGo, you'll get the explanation of raising of the veil, lifting of the veil, unveiling the truth, which is what, in fact, apocalypse actually means. Mm-hmm. Another word that you'll, um, you, you'll often see uh, hijacked is occult. Occult means all dark magic, black magic. No, it doesn't. It means hidden knowledge. That's what it means. It simply means knowledge that is shared within the highest levels of secret societies that's communicated with hidden language and symbolism that is unknown to the masses, including the order followers that blindly follow without question. And this um, uh, this, uh, occult knowledge allows them the power that they have to do what they're doing, right? So it's important to understand that this so-called elite, which as far as I'm concerned, an elite of nothing more than a fucking cesspool, what they actually think about us as people and what they actually think about their order followers. So really what they think about us as people is we are the sleeping public. We are the dead due to the fact that the occult knowledge or the hidden knowledge that should be known to the masses, but is not and is kept by the few to control the masses, leaves us in a state of unconsciousness or unknowing of the hidden truth. So let me explain what I mean by that. What we should be as full spectrum beings, we should have alignment of our thoughts, our emotions and our actions. And Passio describes this as having activated thoughts, activated emotions leading to activated actions as these so-called global elites supposedly do. And if you don't have that, then you are considered unconscious, unknowing, stupid, dead in their terms. And they believe that that gives them the right to treat us however they choose. Now, from an order follower's perspective, there's even more contempt. Mockery is in plain sight for those who have gained an understanding of how symbolism and language is used by these people. So I made a couple of notes in regard to it, but basically all the followers call uh, military folk and uh, law enforcement our dogs. Dog tags in the military are just one of many symbols of mockery that depict them as nothing more than human pets. Now, I know that that's a jagged pill to swallow, so don't shoot the messenger because it's not coming from me. But I really would recommend that you look at said clip for yourself and make your own distinctions and then have a look and do some research. I mean, because everything, can I literally mean everything is in plain sight. But such symbolism is hidden from the uninitiated unless you are an occultist or more particularly a dark occultist. So for example, Look at the police officer. Now, I say police officer because I won't say policeman because a policeman is a thing that's long gone. 
I'm talking about corporate owned police officer. But look at the flat cap and the symbology and the symbolism that's on it. It starts with the checkered board. So the checkered chessboard checkering, right? Which with um, in um, uh, their terms is called the checkered board of the house depicted as Solomon's temple in Masonic terms. And it represents baseline consciousness. So the checkered floor represents baseline consciousness or complete unconsciousness in general. A lack of understanding of one's true spiritual nature. No understanding of natural law. Those that cannot define the difference between good and evil, who are ignorant, in fact, to both elements. Again, not coming from me. This is coming from, from him. But if you look, it all makes sense. The checkered board represents the lowest level of consciousness. You can't get any lower. And in the police cap example, this is placed around the brain, right? The next, um, the, the objective in Masonic terms is to get off the base level check, checkered floor to climb Jacob's ladder to get to the pillars of ex, um, enhanced consciousness, which leads to complete left and right brain balance, which is where I'm going with this and something that we're going to talk about shortly. The mockery continues in this example of the police flat cap with the highly satanic symbolism within the badged insignia. If you look at a lot of military and uh, uh, police insignia, uh, Jordan Maxwell is another great resource for this. And also again, Passio. But you usually see some kind of inverted five-star pentagram um, or something similar. Again, over the third eye chakra, indicating that you, you know nothing and that you are owned. This is their depiction. This is how they mock, you know, our brave military and law enforcement people that think they're doing the right thing. And I think it's a long time that they understood. The cherry on the cake in this example alone, and there's many, many more examples, which I would encourage you to look at so much so that you get to the point where you think well, there's just no denial to it. But the black circle of the, of the flat cap, in some police departments, particularly in the US, is an octagon shape. And that is placed over the top of the crown chakra, again, indicating that you um, have a, a lack of consciousness and no understanding. I mean, seriously, look for yourself. You can't make this shit up, you know. And I, I think that people should know, particularly those that um, <laughs> are doing their dirty work, because let's face it, I mean, they anything that's imposed upon us is carried out by all the followers. And in their way of thinking, that removes them totally from any karmic debt. You know, I mean, so, so very, very strange, but I think really, really, this is, needs to come out. This needs to be known, and more and more of it is coming out. And it's going to hemorrhage to the point where people are just going to realise and not be able to handle what's truly been going on. But getting back to the left and brain balance thing, the higher brain needs to be balanced. So the ultimate goal being the left muscular solar brain is uh, in balance with the right feminine lunar brain. So both hemispheres are in harmony or hemisync, to use a term, which, which is uh, with each other. In which case, if you have both this harmonized left and right brain, then you get the activation of the human pineal gland and the third eye, which is how we were intended to function. Now, many things have been implemented that fuck with that. So I'll talk about, but first of all, left brain function include analytical thought, logic, language, reasoning, science and math, written number skills, right hand control, the more masculine action of doing, but uh, in a more self-serving way, if that makes sense. So, so if you are forced into left brain dominant completely, then you know, you're going to get a lot of breakdown and problems. Right brain function includes art, awareness, creativity, imagination, intuition, insight, holistic thought, musical awareness, left hand control. The more compassionate, caring for all component that is clearly missing from humanity. You know, we have to agree with that, right? The balance has been hijacked in so many ways on so many levels. Uh, what is packaged and sold to us as food that has been GMO modified, the fluoride in the water, toxins and poisons in consumer products, 
shit in the atmosphere, chemtrails, social media conditioning, indoctrination on all levels within education, you name it, they fucked with it, right? And it is this left brain balance, really, that we all should seek, yeah? And uh, if you have that, if you touch upon that, left brain balance you will start to get more in tune with what you are you know once you get those that third eye activation if you like you'll realize that you are (laughs) fucking so much more than this meat sack and what this mind tells you you are you know so if you look in um that i've heard anyway that the condition of bipolar can inhibit one part of the brain for significant periods of time, great misery for the recipient. Being um, coherent forcefully into left brain activities specifically, I believe is what has led to all kinds of problems. And many of, of people that exhibit those problems are not even aware that are out of balance. I mean, they say like, you know, we've, we've been in prison forever, but people have got no chance of escaping the prison until they know they're in prison. And of course, fucking many don't. But I believe that the path to a spiritual awakening leads back to this left and right harmonic balance. The intuitive third eye activation. This is what's going to lead to us becoming a a full spectrum being on a physical, mental and spiritual level. You know, and for me, that is where my awakening has, has took me. You know, I'm touching the fucking surface of it. I don't know why by anywhere, by any means at the summit. I'm still on the journey for sure. But the full spectrum realization to what we really are as self-governing sovereign human beings, along with the awareness of what these fucking entities have done to us on so many levels for so fucking long. That realization is the only thing that's going to set us free, I believe. You know what I mean? This ends when we fucking when we gather that realization and make it. End. You know that, that, that's the only way. When we learn to apply that also important little fucking word that everyone seems to have forgotten, no, which is a statement in itself. You know, you apply that with righteous fucking indignation. That gift from our creator that has given us our ability to stand up against all wrongdoing then I believe this will shift. That's when you're going to get the shift. And I think that that realisation and that activation is possibly going to hit the masses on a big level. And uh, and that's when we're going to see change. But it's going to get fucking ugly and it's going to get worse before it gets better. That's just my thoughts. But I would certainly recommend that anybody looks, particularly police officers, because let's be honest, police officers and military are the thing that stand between this happening and not. You know, they're, they are the ones that will carry out the, the, the dirty work of whatever it is their so-called leaders tell them to do. They're not getting their hands dirty. They've got no karmic debt coming their way. You know, if there is any kind of Nuremberg two trials you know the the act of i was just doing my job isn't going to cut it on a on a normal fucking level if you people understand what natural law is you know basically do not steal do not steal my life do not steal my health do not steal my wealth do not steal my freedom do not steal my property do not impose upon me you know, we know the difference between right and wrong innately as human beings, unless you are wired as a psychopath or a sociopath, you know the difference between right and wrong. And I think we need to look within ourselves. And many of these people, I mean, if you look within this clip that I talk about, it, they show one U.S. Army soldier outside the White House and he's being asked certain questions about, you know, on a personal level, what do you feel, you know, about your fellow brothers and sisters? Oh, I don't feel anything. I just do what my leaders tell me. And I mean, it's scary that that there is indoctrination to that level. It's like, it's like the woman that I talked about when I said about the mask. I mean, his, his eyes look the same. I think transhumanism has been amongst us for a significant period of time. And I think many, many people are, uh, you know, possibly uh, within that field, 
wired to simply follow, but I don't believe that's everybody. I mean, you're working heavily with a movement where there are you know, ex-military people that are coming to the realisation that what our forefathers fought for, you know, we are most, not we, and I'm not part of that collective, but the majority of people are just giving up freely. I had an argument with somebody in a shop when it was... Um, when the poppies, we could buy the poppy, you know, for, for the, the D-Day celebration. And I, this guy walks out and he's queuing up to buy a poppy and he's got a fucking mask on. And again, I couldn't keep my mouth shut. And I'm like, mate, look, look at what a fucking oxymoron that is. Take one and the fucking other off. Take the poppy off or take the fucking mask off. Because our forefathers fought two fucking world wars for your fucking freedom and mine. And you're wearing this little slave muzzle that just says you've given it away. You know, Use your fucking brain. Again, fluorides there didn't get what I was saying. Uh, many, many of the people have just lost, you know, and what it fucking needs is, is an awakening of those that actually have the capacity to make a difference. We need our military. We need our police. We need those people that are standing between them and us to fucking wake up and pick a side. I mean, you've, it's been said a lot. Pick your side, pick your side. I mean, I know they want to feed the families and everything else, but do they really think that they're not going to be superfluous to their requirements once the agenda is met? I mean, it really, it, it, it's time that people took some critical thinking and the right people need to do it. And the right people are our, you know, respected, brave soldiers and, and police officers that put themselves in the line of fire to keep others safe. I mean, they need to wake up. We need them on side, and then this this fucking thing will shift. Because some of the examples I've seen within some of these rallies, some of these police rallies, the police that I've seen operate, it's like they're not police. It's just like they're rogue. It's like they're hired thugs in fucking a police uniform, just you know doing whatever they've been told. I mean, at what point? Where does that stop? You know, it's just, it's a scary thought. Yeah, and this comes back to what Mark Passio talks about, isn't it? That, that military and police are, are predominantly left brain. So, can well, that's it. I mean, and all of that is, is pushed that side. So you become more self serving, you know, and, and you, you follow blindly. And it seems you don't have the, the ability for the anatomical thought, critical thinking. And, you know, the, the compassionate part of yourself, if that's turned right down, I mean, to a point where it's pretty much non-existent. A lot of these people are just, just following all this man he thought whatsoever. The problem, well, the, the challenge, the challenge as far as I see it, Lee, is I know what it took for me to wake up, and that was a lot of, I don't want to say hardship, that sounds like a whinge, but I've, I've come through some pretty tough stuff, <laughs> you know, um, Shivering. I think the throat. only way the only way that you're going to get any kind of spiritual awakening or any kind of growth in character has to come from discomfort. Mm -hmm. That's the only way. I mean, for those that are not awakened in the main, as far as I see, have, have just had no hard, no hardship in their life. Everything's just come to them really easy. I mean, let's face it: the last two or three decades of modern man. I talked about this before when we spoke before. How are are soft. You know, and they become soft. They don't know what arduous is. They couldn't imagine, you know, the, the, the lifestyle of our grandfathers or our great grandfathers or anything else. They just fall apart like a fucking paper condom. Mm. They really would. They've got they've got no spine, no backbone. Everything's come too easy. And you know, they've got the biggest attitude and opinion in the world, but you know, they've got no fucking character. There's nothing behind them. And the only way that you build character and is through adversity. Growth comes from discomfort, without a doubt. And I had a fucking hard upbringing, you know, boo-hoo, fucking hell. But I left home in school when I was 11 years old. I was on the street till I was 16. I got involved with lots of unsavory things in my life. And, you know, looking back now to where I am now, I realised that all of those lessons were essential. You know, they were, they, they are what allowed me to build the emotional software that I need right now, where I am now. When all this began, I stopped teaching law enforcement and military. I worked extensively with the, the Metropolitan Police, the UK Grand and Greater Manchester Police and various others, many police departments across all of Europe and also in the US. 
But in, I stopped working with them. And I know that from within the UK perspective, the training for the defensive tactics instructors is, is inadequate, let's say. So you're getting people who just do a course, get a fucking uniform, throw it in a situation like that, and they're going to underreact or they're going to overreact. And in the main cases, when they're, they're you know, as a mass together, when they're bullying and coercing fucking women and children into certain areas, they're Billy Big Bollocks. As soon as somebody fights back and makes a fucking stand, they, they all seem to be, like you say, you know, they, they, they bottle it. They, they overreact with adrenaline. You see, I've seen a couple of clips recently where they're so wide-eyed, you, they're not compass mentors, they're limbic brain in that moment. It looks... Um, you know, they're just... Some of them clips, it looks a bit more than adrenaline, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you actually look at... That, that's what you, you got to ask yourself, you know? Are they road cops in uniform? What, what, the, what the fuck are they? What, what is that? You know, are they programmed just to be, you know, good little dogs? What, or, or are they just people that, I don't know, feel they've been, you know, had a, a, had a rough deal in life and now they're in a position of authority and want to assert that authority? Who knows? I don't know. But all I know is, is that the day of the policeman, you know, when I was a kid, a cop would give you a fucking good stiff talking to, maybe a clip around the ear and send you home. You know, the police man is gone. I mean, if you look at all police officers, they're a corporate fucking company. Mm. They're, they're, it's all about money. That's all they are. Everything is about money. And what, what, what astounds me is, is how much is enough wealth? You know, if you look at this global cartel as a whole, you know, that they're all integrated, they're all fucking organised, they're all scratching each other's back, they're all lifting each other up, they're all covering each other's bullshit. You know, just like um, uh, boundaries in, in countries are not to keep them out, they're to keep us in or out. Do you know what I mean? It, it, this so-called global elite, as you see it, are just... They have control of any everything. So if you look at the idea or the analogy of the pyramids, so those at the top control the masses at the bottom, they literally control fucking everything. Mm. I mean, you know, you know, finance, business, medical care, world health organization, the judicial system, you know, the military, all law enforcement, government. I mean, everything can anything can everything they fucking control and it's all about taxation taking this off us putting that up telling us there's no resources telling us there's people you know that you know, there's food shortages it's all fucking bullshit there's a, such an abundance and if these cunts weren't in power doing what they've done for so fucking long everyone would have abundance you know everyone would be comfortable this is not how shit was supposed to be we did not come here to be fucking slaves to to their system, and you know that, that's the awakening. That's what people have got to fucking realise. They don't even know they're in prison. Yeah, the, the problem is though, is they're not the enemy. All they're doing is go along for the ride and manipulating people off their human weaknesses, right, or human foibles. Our enemy is not understanding our pineal gland, isn't it? Well, that's it. So that's that's what I'm saying. The occult knowledge the hidden knowledge as to what we are, which gives you activated thoughts, activated emotions and activated actions is the full spectrum being whose pineal gland is firing perfectly well, whose left and right brain is in perfect harmonic balance. That's how we should be. And if we were that, this, this, none of this would have happened. You know, we've been dumbed down to a point where, you know, we're just, good little house cat that will do what he's told or what she's told. We are completely, like, what was the saying? The saying is, it's much easier to um, deceive an entire population than to bring to the attention that the entire population has been deceived. Yeah, I mean, and it is. I mean, you you know, oh, conspiracy theorists and all the rest of it. I mean, how many fucking times have we heard that over the years? But now these people that are doing as they're told, you know, getting this and then this again and then this again and still getting, you know, restrictions placed upon them and sanctions upon them or getting poorly and ill after one or two of those and thinking, right, I know so many people are going, well, I'm not having the other one. 
You know, yeah. I'll have two. I'm not having the other one. That's, that's not right. Something's wrong here. And then, like, in most cases, you know, if they pull it out like they have in Israel, well, you've already had two or three. But if it's six months down the line, you haven't had nothing. You're not, you've had nothing. You know, you're back to square one. Well, where does that end? Well, clearly, it doesn't. Mm. You know, it doesn't end. You know, and I've got to tell you this, whether you want to edit it out or not. Um, but I was in a cafeteria the other day. Um, in Lyndhurst in a new forest near where I live. And there was, I counted 25 people in there. And there was me and my wife. So 27 total. And somebody told me that this had happened. So I thought, oh, I'll try it. So I put on my phone and I flicked on the Bluetooth. And when I flicked on the Bluetooth, all of these numbers, letter, Number, letter, number, letter, number, like this, all in a sequence, same amount of characters on each one, but all different. Popped up one after the other, after the other, after the other. And I counted them. There was 25. 25 people in the room, 25 things came up on Bluetooth that there was a plausibility for me to connect to. And it didn't say like, you know, LG27, which is your TV or or. Uh, Range Rover, whatever, evoke so you can connect to your car. It was just a sequence of numbers and letters. And I'm thinking, what the fuck is that? Because somebody told me that they were on a plane recently and they tried to connect to the Wi-Fi and all of the people that were next to them and around them were popping up. And what was actually popping up is the code number for what they've had. But my point is, if it is a result of that and that, comes up on your Bluetooth, then who else is connected to that? Who else can have access to that data within your body? I mean, that's a scary thought, which, of course, is what they what this is all about. This is all about complete control to the point where, you know, there'll be thought finds. They're controlling what you think, what you do. Well, the, I believe that where that ends, I mean, if you look at any of the Texas, Georgia World 1984 or any of the stuff that Ike, even though Ike, I believe, has controlled opposition, he's still been telling you for a significant enough period of time. Yeah, that, that um, 1984 fucking the book that was read, many, many others. I saw something from a French writer that was done back in the 40s. I saw something else recently written in the 1980s. It's all been out there for a long time and it all steers towards complete depopulation you know it's to to genocidal levels and then those that are you know are still alive at the end of it under complete control pro, pro, and predominantly if they you know they're coming for the fucking children they're trying to get this in the kids you know, i honestly think that they're trying to con you know, they want to be able to control the next future generations and make sure that they're you know that the the, uh, the fertility is completely controlled so that we don't go on. Those that are around are completely controlled and those that are superfluous to requirements are you know, dying of so-called natural conditions. And people are so brainwashed, it just seems they can't connect the fucking dots. Are, are really people not connecting the fucking dots? I mean, I just... That's what I mean. It seems like people are cocooned to a certain level of intelligence or thinking and they can't there's no capacity or, or hardware space, software space for them to be able to think beyond. But Lee, even the people, right? And I, I'm, I'm technically leading a global organisation now, right? Even the people that get that something's hookies, they still don't get. That's just a tiny part of a massive, massive, you know, it's just a tiny, tiny, you know, everyone's getting hung up. We can fix this. Kick Boris out. Yay, life will be back. It's fucking, I haven't got a clue. You know, 400-year-old agenda here, folks. These people know what they're doing. They've, you know, they've been exposed over the years. Papers, documents have come out to show their plan. And it's just exactly yes, what's yes. exactly... They've essentially cut us off. I mean, you lost, you've lost Merkel in Germany. Boris Johnson will be gone. They'll move their players around. They've, had, they've, they've served their purpose and others will take their place. It's nothing to do with them. They're the little puppets. 
You know, yeah. it, it goes way, way beyond. And to be honest, I believe personally that even though it goes to this so-called global elite, the establishment that's supposedly at the top, I don't believe they're, they're at the top. I believe they're having their strings pulled too. And I believe this has been going on for a long, long period of time. And that's when you start to lose people, when you start to talk about, you know, the plausibility of um, you know, non-human entities involved in this. You know, that's, people won't get their head around that. But more and more and more disclosure is coming. I mean, there's so much out there. I mean, if you look at just, you know, say, for example, the Gaia channel, and some of the, pro the programs on their cosmic disclosure and various sort of things. Now, you know that many of those people on there are controlled opposition and, and possibly they, there's lots of misdirection within it. But there's so much information out there that just wasn't out 20 years ago that we didn't know that is proven. I mean, they, you know, if alien life is, is not now, oh, what, you believe in aliens, you're crazy. I mean, now there's a community out there that think you're absolutely fucking stupid if you don't, because there's so much evidence, you know, there's so much evidence of, of reverse engineered technology. They reckon that they had um, uh, anti-gravity with propulsion technology back in 1952. Uh, here's one for you then, right? Why do they say, why has the narrative been that, Homo sapiens have been here for 200,000 years, right? When clearly, I mean, Jesus was 2,000 years ago, right? So it's not... Personally, I don't believe our history is anywhere near that long. I believe that there was a great, there was a great reset or a reset in place less than a 1,000 years ago, less but less. I think our history doesn't go back to any more than that. Some people think our history is no more than 200 years old. Everything that we've been told is a fucking lie, mate. Everything. There may be half-truths, mistruths, misdirection, but everything we know as we know isn't what we think, you know, truly. There's, there's evidence in, you know, from civilization. Just look at um, Tartan, Tartaria and the magnificent buildings that were available that were built all over the world, presumably by the technology of the people at that time, which had very basic tools and traveled around by horse and car. I mean, come on. You know, it doesn't take a lot of fucking working out. If you look into the Tartaria, Tartania, Tartania, Tartaria, um, uh, you know, the, the theory about the, the past civilization that was much more advanced than us, that was literally wiped out and there was a reset. You see evidence of it from the buildings. You see many buildings that are magnificent. And on a floor level, you've got what would have been the top windows of the floor when it was above ground, but now below ground because it was sunk with mud flaps, uh, mud floods. And everywhere around is mud. If you have a look, you'll see evidence of, of you know, undisputable pictures, photographs, films of, of technology that they've had forever. You know, I saw something in the 1920s or early 1900s, and it's just like a grainy old film. And there's people going around on electric scooters, for fuck's sake, which have presumably only been out for the last couple of years. I mean, they've been lying to us for a long, long time. They've been holding technology. They've been holding medical cures. They've created the majority of the fucking diseases that are killing people, all the fucking man-made, and they're fed by the GMO-engineered food and what they put in the fucking water and the chemtrails. When it comes a realisation of what these fuckers have actually done, Mate, they want to have the ability to move to another planet, I'm telling you, because they'll be fucking hunted and hung in the street. There has to be a fucking turning point. There has to be. The worm's got to turn. If you actually had undisputed evidence of everything that they've done to the point where he's just indisputable, well, first of all, you'd have a significant period of probably a significant number of probably older people that would just have a heart attack on the spot and die because they wouldn't be able to comprehend it. Other people would be jumping off of buildings, but then you'd get that, that realisation. You know, first of all, shock, denial. You'd have to go through the, 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 the stages of loss. First of all, denial. And then fucking depression. Ang anger. 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 Righteous, righteous fucking indignation. And that's what's going to put this right.
and then um, you know depression, foreboding, and then eventually you get bargaining and acceptance. But that point where you just get fucking angry when you know, I mean, there ain't going to be no hiding place for no one when, when, when people have that. And that includes the fucking all the followers. That's why they really need to pick a side. Do you think so? Or do you, do you think that it, it, I can't see how a violent uprising. I'm not, they saying are, I'm not, I'm not inciting that. Let's get that straight. Right. I mean, obviously there'd be parts of that. I'm, I'm talking about righteous indignation where people have that realisation. So when you have the realisation, let's say just to the level that I have, it, right, you can't unknow once you know. And once you know, you can't suddenly go, oh, well, OK, I'll know. I'll just put it to the back of my mind, compartmentalise it, and I'll just go on as nothing's happened. There's, there's no way that we could do that. You know, there's no way that I could do that. When I realise that everything that, you know, they've ever done is designed to hurt us, to fuck us up in some way, to kill us slowly, to depopulate us, to keep us where they want us. How can you how can you have an acceptance of that anymore? You can't. I think if it comes on another on, on enough of a level, I just everybody stood in their real self-governing sovereignty and just went, no, I don't care what you do. I'm not abiding. I'm not doing it. I do not consent. If everyone did that, it'd be like that, that clip from that film, Fee for Vendetta, when you've got all the cops and all the military in the street and then you've just got masses of people just waving through. And it, it's, even the cops and the military are just like, yeah, yeah, fuck it. Do you know what I mean? You're just going to get... I just think that you globally... Something's coming that is going to be on a global scale, there'll be no, no matter where you are on the planet, you're not not going to know. And I think that will be a revolt. I think a worldwide revolt will come. And I know that they're coercing and egging and pushing people to rise up so that you can get the, you know, the fucking sheepy fucking lefty liberals to go, oh, do something about it. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's martial law and they create a police state. That could be their goal. Yes, for sure. But I think it would happen when this, this, everything comes out and this awakening shifts and people's consciousness level raises up to the point where they just, just they know, I don't think they'll ever be able to contain them. I don't, I don't think so, personally. I think that that level of awakening will just make... The trouble, the trouble is, is they, they will control that level of awakening to a certain degree. They'll... they'll you, we know, don't we, that they'll be nudging people into a violent upright. You know, they they don't want people to know that we've been cut off from source and that if we reconnect to source, job done, you know. Well, there's the, I mean, there's the thing. So I would say personally, when you define what is a spiritual awakening, I think it's it's having a realisation of what you come from. And if that, that's got to lead to your reconnection of source, I mean, I've done everything over the last two years to detoxify my body, to, to you know, uh, open this. And I had that happen some significant period of time ago. So the winter solstice is just gone. And the winter solstice before, 21st of December 2020, literally two days after, two or three days after, I felt this, this almost decalcifying crystallization happening here. And ever since then, I've had this center, third eye, call it what you like, activation. When I close my eyes, I can see it clearly. And what's, you know, nothing else has happened other than that. It's not a portal that's open that showed me anything. But I'm very, very aware of its presence. If I close my eyes, I can see this almost like northern light shape of like an eye, and if I put my hands over it, no matter how much I cover, it's almost a projection from inside my head to the inside of my skull. It's there. That was never there before. And I'm much more intuitive. I'm much more, you know, I, I sense things and I feel things from a period where I just have this knowing in my heart. I mean, I believe that that's my spiritual awakening. I feel yeah. clear cognitive. I have the knowing. I don't see anything like others, you know, but I just have this this feeling and it's it's accelerating. It really is. And like I say, we have this thing that on a on a Tuesday evening, this soul dojo, if you like. And really more and more people w- would be be do themselves a service if they did something similar themselves. You know, we just get together and we talk about things. So while I'm on it, 
I might say that, you know, anyone has an interest in possibly exploring what they think their spiritual awakening is somewhat more and want to talk to like-minded people, then send me an email privately, you know, to um, urbanwarrior247 at gmail.com and we'll have a conversation about it because I really think like-minded people need to get together and realise what they are because everything we need to end this is within us. Yes, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to start... um for my Patreons and channel supporters, I'm just going to, I've always done live coaching once a month, but I'm going to make the group more about this. So people that are, are curious can come in. So friends at home, it's one ninety nine a month to be on the Patreon. So, you know, get involved because it's good. It's, it's what most people look for their whole life. And mo- most will never find because they don't realize it's, it's already within us. Yeah. And um, it's just a good conversation to get on, I think. I'm sure many people feel it, but are too nervous to say anything to anyone else because they're worried about what others think. But, you know, I've, many years ago, I kind of run out of fucks to give about what other people think of me. I, you know, I've never been the kind of person that dictates what I do in my behaviour by what other people think. You know, I think inwardly I'm a good person, I'm a good skin, I treat people the way I would like to be treated. I'm not disrespectful to anyone, but if I have a view and if I believe a truth, I'm going to shout my fucking truth on the rooftop. You know, and that's what other people need to do. They need to have a realisation of what they are. This yeah. Shit, this shit ends when we fucking end it, mate. That's it. We all need to stand up in our sovereignty and be together. I've never, uh, I've never worried what people think because um, so many do though. I, I, yeah, but I've always, this is going to sound a bit big headed, but I've always known I'm a fucking legend, and and that <laughs> that if people were telling me that you know buildings don't fall out of the sky, it, it that's their issue. You know, it, it, they got to stop watching so much Sky News. And am I going to like watch Sky News to try and be like, no, I'm a fuck. I'm gonna keep. I'm just gonna keep getting out there, smashing it. I mean, anyone that anyone that, that, anyone that questions my views and my thoughts, so these cunts that are still watching the BBC for fuck's sake. Do you know what I mean? If you're still watching the BBC and you're still watching Sky News and CNN, I mean, I can't fucking help you. You know, you're already lost. Turn that shit off. Yeah. Fucking go inward. And ask I would yourself only... with some critical thinking, some instinct from your gut and from your heart. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. only watch the BBC um, to congratulate Tony Blair on his knighthood. Yeah, satanic. I'll yeah. probably delete that. It's exactly what he is. That's what they all are. Oh, it's just... They make me sick. Ooh. Oh, gosh. They, they, they've overplayed their game, mate. People aren't that stupid that they'll accept Tony Blair having a knighthood. That It's either some grand chess play to distract... From something else. Well, look at the knee street. He fucking sold us out. You know, he, he, he should be hung for fucking treason. They all should. Well, he's he's still selling us out, mate, isn't he? He's still in with it with the new world order and still got his institute. I saw a, a meme the other day, and it was it was a picture, and it had one of the popes. It had one of the the older uh, Rothschilds and Rockefellers, the Queen, and um, her. Her, her husband and it showed the commonality of all of their eyes and they must have caught them with this sardonic type of stare and they said the eyes are the windows to the soul and they all look demonic all of them they all, yeah. look, they all look fucking demonic a lot of them you know they're, they're, they're staying wide right mate I mean, wide, right if you look at what the hollow man concept is of the psychopath the part of the brain that has any ability for empathy is missing and while there's it's like that in control of us it's always going to be this way you know, we, we need we need to uh, we need a change yeah we need, we need things to change for sure and i do believe that that's coming we moved into aquarius which is the age of knowing and the apocalypse like i said is the lifting of the veil the transparency transparency now is just coming through there's no hiding place and they know it. And you can see by the urgency and the agenda that the, you know, the mistakes that they're making. But uh, 
Where, where will it go? Well, I, I'm optimistic. I like to think that it's going to get worse, yes, before it gets better, but I do believe it will get better. But I want freedom for my grandchildren. I've got three granddaughters, and I want them to have the right for their, them to have children and for their children to have children. And if we don't wake up and stand together and, and have a realisation of what's truly going on, then civilization and human civilization as we know it will be fucking extinct. We need to make a stand for what we believe, you know, for what we're willing to, uh, you know, I want to I come here to live life. I come here to bring fucking heaven to earth. I didn't come here to be a fucking slave. So I think everyone needs to do their bit as much as they can. You know, if you've got a platform where you can educate others and speak out, you fucking should. Really, it's on you if you don't, you should. You know, and yeah. just got to be here for each other and help each other. And as this awakening more and more takes place and more and more people suffer, then hopefully more and more people like us will be there for them to help them through it. Other people write to me, complain that I've been talking about the Freemason. And I'm like, dude, you're supposed to belong to a, an order that that teaches enlightenment and you're sending me an angry email. Do you not get the... Uh, well, my, 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 my point of contention is for that is, is that regardless of what level you are, ground level or 33 degree, it doesn't really matter. You all take the same oath. You all take the same oath, you know, may my heart be cut out and my gut spread across the lawn if I share any of our secrets. I mean, really, if you all have to say that to get involved in a group, None of what you're going to partake in sounds good, does it? Do you know what I mean? It only takes a little bit of think, oh, real, do, do I want to actually take part in this group? And if I, you know, accidentally slip up and say anything, I'm going to get my heart cut out and my gut spread across the lawn. It's, there's nothing good about that. You know, now, just, that's all just, just look at the oath that they take. Yeah, that's all low level nonsense. So, mate, and honestly, they all say it though. They all say it, don't they? I mean, yeah. wouldn't, that, wouldn't that spark a little red flag in your brain? It certainly would me. Yeah, of course. It just goes way, way, way higher than we oh, understand. Oh, God, yes. Of course it does. But the actual so original... So long, so long. The original teachings are all what we've been saying. You know, you the pillars, the... What was it? Jo the Boaz and... Yeah, yeah. So, you, you the, the, well, the way I understand it, Solomon's Temple, you've got the checkered floor and the objective is to rise from the checkered floor up to the two pillars via Jacob's Ladder to get to the left and right brain balance harmony, which then fires the pineal gland for the full spectrum being. Yeah. That's, become, the, way I, that's the way I understand Become enlightened. It. Yeah. But, um, um, obviously, it's been uh, contorted and used for very, very selfish means. Yeah. Well, it's just been hidden because I, I just know for a fact my mates at Freemasons, no, I mean, no disrespect, but they're like the furthest from being enlightened. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. They, 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 they have no idea. Like, literally, they're the ones going around with their underpants on their face. <laughs> um, um, but, but, but certainly the actual original masonry was re what you're saying, really, really bloody clever, you know? Now it's just another system of control within a system of control, isn't it? Um, yeah. I mean, I really would suggest that, you know, you do a little bit of research. I, was, I can't recommend Mark Passio enough. Mm. You know, what I talked about before, and what, you know, the mockery via symbolism. I mean, please have a look. See for yourself. There's, 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 there's a clip out there. It's all out there. It's all up there. It's all in plain sight. Have a look for yourself and see what you think. Do you think it's bullshit? You don't believe it? Then fine, that's your thinking. At least you had a look. But I would say have a look. You know, be brave enough to let it spark that element of doubt in you. Yeah. You know? So with that, friends at home, I'll put a link to Mark's channel below in the, the video that we've specifically been talking about. But Lee, as always, great chatting, mate. And let's, yeah, let's appreciate it, mate. Yeah, let's do this again because I like these, you know, because not many people I can have this sort of chat with and it's uh -huh. it's all the good stuff, you know. So uh, what's your what's your plans in the near future? Anything? How's how's the dojo going? Well, the, well the, we've got this group, like I said, Soul Dojo, which we do every Tuesday. We're trying to build that. We're, uh, you know, just ironing things out and getting some things right. I've got this other channel, Peaceful Warrior channel, which I've been employing. I'm still doing what I do, 
you know, the urban combative, so I'm still a personal security consultant. All my work now is within the UK. I haven't really travelled since all of this bullshit because I won't be dictated to what I've got to do and I'm not putting no fucking shit up my nose or any tests anywhere else. So I'll uh, focus on, you know, the UK, what I'm doing. My online business is going well, in spite of the fact that I'm no longer on the international seminar circuit, which was a big part of my income. I'm still very, very fucking fortunate and grateful that for the abundance that's bestowed upon me every day. So I, I live in gratitude and I'm living each day to the full, mate, as much as I Good. can. That's all we can do. Good. Yeah, heaven and hell is within you, mate. Isn't it, yeah. Really? It's all within you. So. Wise words, mate. Thanks again, Lee. To everyone at home, massive love to you all. Look after each other. Uh, turn off the mainstream media. You've been asked to do this so many times now, right? Us old farts, we're saying this for a reason. You know, if you if you got Sky News still playing at twenty four seven on your big telly, you, you, then the kids haven't got a chance. You no. know, and they just like, ignore that advice. You're already fucked. Well, you, you know, it in this country we got a really low view, and rightly so, of people that hurt children, yeah. and yet, and yet, the, the people, fucking world's being the, run by people that hurt children. Yeah, but the people just going along with this agenda blindly. Oh, Chris, it just makes it easier when I go shopping. Oh, it just make, w- makes it easier to go or not, right? You're, you're hurting them children more than... More people than need to stop being fucking selfish. They need to be willing to, you know, let go of things, you know, because this isn't about any one person anymore. This isn't about what you want or what suits you or what you find inconvenient. This is about the collective of future generations. Mm. And we need to fucking realise, have that realisation. You know, I have a realisation of what I'm here for now. I always used to think pushing the rock up the hill, what the fuck is it? There's got to be more to life than this. And then when all this happened, and I've got to the point that I, I, I am now, I know that there's so much more to life. I have a reason to be here now. I have a reason that I want to live for, and that's my freedoms and the things that I love in my life. And that is a reason to stand and fight for if necessary, and if you want to be willing to fucking die for that freedom. So I have a cause now. I know that I have a reason. I want the future of my grandchildren's children to be one where, you know, they can be free and they can be safe and they can be happy and they can live out their dreams and do the things that they want to do. And the only way that's going to happen is people like me stand up for them. You know, I, I can imagine the conversation when my grandchildren are older, if, you know, if I'm still here, but I say, Granddad, what did you do at this period of time? You know, you know, well, I, was, I was making as big a fucking noise as I could. I was doing everything I could to foresee their freedoms. You know, unlike, I'll say it, and I'll say it blatant now, unlike their father, who is fast to fucking sleep and pretending this isn't happening and doesn't talk to me anymore because I'm the elephant in the room, but so be it. But I will stand and fight for the freedoms of my grandchildren, no matter what, in any way I've got them. People need to do that. You need to make a sacrifice now, you know, because you want to go on holiday, you're going to do this, going to do that. Well, fuck what you want. What about what our future generations of, of kids want? Start to think that way, I believe. Exactly. And with that, friends at home, if you can like and subscribe, I hope you've enjoyed this chat as much as I have. We're out of here. All right. Peace.